Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox Reviews and the debut of our new series, Versus. There's no way to learn a watch better than comparing it to another watch. Now, sometimes in this series, we're going to compare watches that are very similar to try to discern the differences, however subtle. Other times, we'll take watches that could not be more different, and in the process of comparing, we actually contrast. I can't think of a better way to start than with a flagship model times two from the number one name in watches, and that's Rolex. Today, we're talking about two watches near and dear to my heart, the Rolex Date 82, which debuted in 2008, the first of the big presidents, if you will, and the Rolex Date 840, its successor, which launched in 2015. Close in size, close in style, but miles apart in detail. We're gonna bring out the best of these watches, but also compare their differences and distinctions. And then at the end, I'm gonna tell you which watch is better in which way. Which watch? Let's find out. This is Date 82 versus Date 840. This can easily pass muster as a dress watch. Nevertheless, it does have the heart of a sports watch. Now, Rolex's goal was to create maximum wrist presence without physically swelling the watch too far beyond their historic reference sizes. Still a reasonable 12 millimeters thick, 49.5 millimeters lug to lug meant it expanded a little over five millimeters across the wrist. But here's where the watch really spread its wings. If you count the solid end links of this Date 82 President bracelet, it measures 53.2 millimeters across the wrist when bracelet end links are taken into account. In other words, it's almost the same wingspan across your wrist as the 53.5 millimeter girth of a 44 millimeter Panerai Luminor in a Bettarini case. So Rolex's bracelet achieved the same scaling effect that the 41 millimeter case alone could not. This president really reads like a 43 to 44 millimeter watch when it's on the wrist, visually. Now, for the Platinum Date 82s only, there was an interesting materials innovation. This was a world premiere from Rolex, where the internal linking pins of the bracelet are ceramic coated. The Platinum Date 82 served as a test bed for technology designed to eliminate Rolex bracelet stretch permanently. A decade later, we can say that the technology needs to be judged as a success. No problems have been noted, nor has any bracelet stretch been observed or reported on any of the Platinum Date 82s. As with all modern Rolex watches, this is still where the greatest amount of hand assembly and fine tuning is applied. The platinum models could be had with the signature ice blue color, and that's exactly what we have on this example today. This is the flagship, but gold hands and indices were standard fitment across the range with blued hands and hour markers sometimes offered. Grooved dials, sunburst textures, different colors, and diamond set options do exist. Both luminescent and non-lumed dials were offered on the Date 82, so know your needs and preferences in advance when shopping Rolex Date 82s. An important detail for the connoisseur is that no other Rolex model ever used the specialized caliber 3156. It remains unique to the Date 82. Small details reveal a, this is a beast, yes, but a beast with brains. Launched in 2015, the Date 840 attempted to refine Rolex's big president concept. The case of the 40 shrinks exactly one millimeter compared to its predecessor, but it's imperceptible to the human eye in its roughly 10% threshold of sensitivity. Lug spacing is identical at 21 millimeters, so the actual span of the bracelet longitudinally across the wrist looks identical on the wrist. And surprisingly, the six millimeter crown is dimensionally identical from the Date 82 to the Date 840. What you do notice in profile is the more gradual taper of the lugs of the Date 840 when viewed against the Date 82. The Date 840 lugs are narrower. They have a slightly more graceful taper towards their terminus. And you also note in profile that the conical platinum bezel of the Date 840 is narrower and more erect. It has a greater vertical aspect than you'll see on the Date 82. A small engineering refinement often overlooked can be seen inside the crown clasp of the Date 840's President bracelet. The 40 uses a more pointed beak locking system as a security measure for the clasp. The bracelet design, however, is where the Date 840 truly becomes a distinct product. As with all Date 82s, all Date 840s feature the Rolex President bracelet exclusively. The bracelet end link profiles dramatically shrink compared to the Date 82. Along with the dials, 
The bracelet visually declares the Date 840 more forcefully than any of its other features. The dial faces of the Date 840 were modified to include new laser-etched textures and motifs. The results are far more sharply and deeply grooved than the old satin grains, or even many of the guilloche cut dials used elsewhere in the industry. Several different colors, cut patterns, both the loomed and the non-loomed options, and diamond set dials do exist within Date 840 production. The model seen here features what Rolex calls its ice blue coloration with a diagonal motif. Wrapping up our comparison, we need to take a look at the Date 82's advantages. First and foremost, as intended, it fits its original mission statement. Looking larger and looking good while doing so. Objectively, the solid end links extend the watch across the wrist. If you want maximum visual impact, you're going to go with a Date 82 primarily because it has more visual impact punch. It's still the statement watch it was designed to be in 2008. The Date 82 remains the largest Date 8 ever, and that carries some degree of bragging rights, as does its use of a unique movement, the caliber 3156, that was featured and will be featured in no other Rolex model. Finally, there are certain specific dials featured on the Date 82 that the Date 840 does not offer, so shop around to know the full scope of what's possible before making your choice. The Date 840 is an evolved Date 82. As a result, it does have some feathers in its cap and advantages when the two go head to head. First and foremost, more compact bracelet stance for smaller wrists. A Date 836 fan can rightly assume sight unseen and watch unworn that a Date 840 will fit on his wrist. Because of the pivoted end links of the Date 840's President bracelet, the watch is considerably more ergonomically correct for a smaller wrist and a better fit generally for smaller forearms. The Date 840 does offer new dial colors and patterns not offered on the Date 82. The sensational low production Eastern Arabic dials, the laser etched motifs, the special baguette set indices, all of these have immense appeal to certain collectors and they're simply not available on the Date 82. Warranty is an important consideration when judging the Date 840 against the two. Every single Date 840 issued by Rolex will have come with the five-year warranty, meaning as of this 2018 taping, every single one of the Date 840s should be under warranty, and those purchased new will be warranted into the next decade. And that brings us to the final advantage of the Date 840. It's still available new, meaning uncommon varieties of this watch, difficult to find on the market, can be factory ordered from Rolex itself through your authorized dealer. And for those who simply must own a new watch, there's simply no substitute. My choice would be a Date 840 with the olive green sunburst dial and a white gold case. If I could not have that, my close second would be a fully luminescent baton index ice blue sunburst Date 82. Those are my choices. They fit my tastes. I would love to know in the description and comment box below what you guys think.